what is a skinwalker? This question has lingered in the minds of curious individuals for generation after generation, as tales of these enigmatic beings have echoed through Native American folklore. Skinwalkers are creatures that possess the ability to transform into various animals, embodying the essence of shape-shifting legends. Their presence is said to be accompanied by malevolence and an aura of darkness, while at the same time instilling fear and fascination. Not many people are familiar with the creature that haunts Native American legend. What little is known by people outside Native American reservations is enough to make your skin crawl. Each nation has its own version of this legendary creature. While each version gives the being different origins and supernatural powers, none of them take the creature lightly. In the Navajo language the skinwalker is called, Yinal Blushii which translates to by means of it, it goes on all fours. No two nations are alike, so they will each have their own unique associations with the creature. Yinal Blushii is just the Navajo version. The overarching term for a non-specific skinwalker is Antijnai. With each unique tradition comes a different origin story for the creature. Some say that a skinwalker is a healer that abused magic for evil, instead of for healing. The term medicine man is not used by every nation. Some use the term shaman, or something else entirely. Native American culture is not homogenous. In certain traditions, the origins of skinwalkers trace back to a haunting transformation from healers and medicine men who succumb to the corrupting influence of their own immense power, ultimately embracing malevolence. This transformation, reminiscent of the fall of Lucifer who became Satan or the devil, adds an eerie dimension to the concept of skinwalkers. As a part of that transformation from an integral, pure force for good for the people of their tribe, they become animalistic. So much so that they have the ability to turn into an animal. They also can possess an animal or person instead of shape-shifting into them. Some say that a skinwalker is not necessarily someone who used magic for evil. Someone can become a skinwalker if they break a sacred rule or commit an act truly against the ways of the people. According to legend, unless you have a bullet or knife dipped in white ash, you cannot kill these humanoid creatures. Even when not in their transformed state, skinwalkers still have a physical form that is not fully human. So, what does a skinwalker look like? They will have exaggerated characteristics that make them look more animal than human alone. A skinwalker, in the accounts of those who claim to have encountered them, is described as a terrifying and shape-shifting creature. It possesses the ability to assume the form of various animals, ranging from wolves and coyotes to bears and birds. When in human form, a skinwalker is often depicted as having unnaturally glowing eyes and an aura of malevolence. Those who have claimed to have seen a skinwalker describe their appearance as gaunt and emaciated, with an unsettling presence that instills fear in all who encounter it. The physical manifestation of a skinwalker can vary, but its presence is consistently accompanied by an overwhelming sense of dread and an undeniable sense of otherworldly power. As far as a deeper understanding of these creatures, people outside of Native American tribes are not privy to that information. Even among their own communities, talking about the skinwalker can only bring the malevolent forces closer. It is believed among the various tribes that even having a discussion about the creature is not just asking for bad luck, it is welcoming them in. So now that the question what is a skinwalker, is answered, what is the skinwalker ranch? Gwen and Terry Sherman lived on what came to be known as the skinwalker ranch for a year and a half before selling it in 1996. After what they saw, they wanted their family to live somewhere safer. After the Desert News published an article called Frequent Flyers in 1996, the term skinwalker became more commonplace. The article detailed what the Sherman family experienced during their time on the ranch. Everything from cattle mutilations and disappearances, sightings of unidentified flying objects, and finding random crop circles found its way into the Sherman's account. But perhaps the most troubling moment they experienced was near the end of their time on the ranch. Terry was walking the family dogs at night and stumbled upon what he thought was a wolf. He said this creature was at least three times larger than your typical wolf. 
Its eyes glowed red, and even though Terry shot the creature three times from close range, it did not appear to do any damage to the strange creature. Currently, the ranch acts as a hub for paranormal investigation, named for the creature Terry saw that night. The short answer? If you do not have Native American heritage, this question is not one for you to answer. Understandably so, citizens of Native American nations rarely share details of their culture with outsiders. This information commonly gets abused and appropriated. J.K. Rowling herself appropriated skinwalkers in her magic in North America lore on Pottermore. Dr. Adrian Keene, an assistant professor at Brown University and a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, explained her distaste for Rowling's lazy appropriation of a deeply disturbing topic in her culture. She says in her article on native appropriations, the belief of these things has a deep and powerful place in Navajo understandings of the world. It is connected to many other concepts and many other ceremonial understandings and lifeways. It is not just a scary story, or something to tell kids to get them to behave, it is much deeper than that. She continued, my own community also has shapeshifters, but I am not delving into that either. What happens when Roland pulls this in, is we as native people are now opened up to a barrage of questions about these beliefs and traditions, but these are not things that need or should be discussed by outsiders. After all, I'm sorry if that seems unfair, but that's how our cultures survive. The other piece here is that Rowling is completely rewriting these traditions. Traditions that come from a particular context, place, understanding, and truth. These things are not misunderstood wizards. Not by any stretch.